morning everyone and a very very warm welcome to you all from the wardens at St Paul's Macclesfield your church this is Nick and this is Matthew yes good morning to you all on this blessed and wonderful day I assume most and many of you are aware that the Reverend Michael Fox gave his last and final service with us all at St Paul's last Sunday and then I would yeah like... that, that's right Nick so we'd like to take this opportunity to say a big Thank you to Michael for all his work at St Paul's and we wish him and Virginia Godspeed on his new adventure. Thank, Thank you. you. Which brings me also to tell you, until we can meet face to face again in our beautiful building at St Paul's, we can assure you that we will do our uttermost best to do online worship to give you all each and every Sunday. Yeah, that, that's right. And during the forthcoming vacancy, Nick and I are heartwarmed that we feel very confident that amongst all of us, we will be a loving, giving and serving congregation of people to take us through this. Do you realise what day it is? Uh, yeah, it's Sunday. And it's Sunday the... 7th of March. But we're doing the online service. Yeah, and? Well, it's this morning. Yeah. But it's at 10.30. It's half nine, Nick. We're doing it. What? Oh, we better go. See ya. There's Macclesfield. We're nearly, nearly there. We need to look for that spire, Nick. That spire can be seen from everywhere. What do you reckon, Nick? 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 What do you call this then? Hey, we need to get back to church. That's the last time I take your shortcut. <laughs> See you later. See you back at church. Run carefully. Come on, never mind your hair, we've got a service to do. Good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. Blimey Nick, that was coming in fine wasn't it? I know, but it's great that we've made it here today. Oh, it just is. What a trek we've had over from Croker Hill and Sutton. It's taken us ages, but we're here. And what an absolute joy it is to bring you this first service um, live from the church during our vacancy. It's lovely to be here, lovely to be stood here with Nick very much hope that you enjoy the service ahead. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praises and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to speak the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the song for today is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words are the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its war. And now we have our readings from both Jean and from Anne. A reading from John chapter 2, verses 13. To 22. Jesus clears the temple. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, the zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miracle signs can you show us to prove you your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, the Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, 
or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them nor worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The talk for this morning is taken from a beautiful little book called The Little Book of Lent. And it's a talk by the late Tom Smale, who was Vice Principal at St John's College, Nottingham. And the reflection is entitled, The Spirit of Hope. When Mary Magdalene looked at the empty tomb where all her hopes were lost, she wept. But when she turned round and at his word, recognised the risen Jesus, her expectations became boundless and her extinguished hopes were reborn. In dark moments of the church's life, the risen Jesus calls us to turn round again to his risen presence, which in practice means to open ourselves in prayer to the springs of life at the heart of our gospel, until we come into revitalising contact with the great but God of Easter morning. This is the God who at the moment when things are at their most hopeless can act decisively to reverse that trend and the very moment when all seems lost can stage a resurrection. The burial of the body of Christ, the church has often been foretold in glee by his enemies and sometimes in tears by his friends, but no undertaker has ever had his fee for that funeral. Funny things are liable to happen on the morning of the third day. So it has proved again and again in the long history of the church, when we, by our sin and unbelief, have made a sorry mess of things and see no way to set them to rights, 
God comes good on his covenant and his promises. By his grace, the body of Christ rises from the dead. This give, gives birth to the hope. Tomorrow is also God's. When the sun goes down on the bleak present, the last word has not been spoken because God's tomorrow is still to come. And the Spirit, when he is prayed for, can take the objective and historical hope anchored in the resurrection of Jesus and make it the basis of a new and vibrant expectation in the life of local churches. As we pray, we come to see that the possibilities are not limited by the statistical trends produced by computerised despair, but by the sovereign interventions of God, who loves us, who comes to where he is invited, and can be expected to do something incalculably different from anything we either plan or dread. These hopes and expectations do not remain entirely in a future that never arrives, but becomes part of the present experience of a praying church. That is what Paul means when he speaks of knowing. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe? Prayer is sustained by the fact that things happen, which we can recognise to God's response to our asking. Why all our prayers are not answered, including the ones clearly based on God's promise and purpose? Why all the sick are not healed, all relationships not mended, all our besetting sins not rooted out? Why a good thing happens to one person and not to another who seems to mean it more is the mystery we encounter in prayer. These are all insoluble questions that have no answer except for the faith that God knows what he is doing and will do it in accordance with his own timetable and not ours. So what I want you to think about today in your prayers is this. Risen Lord, from our despair and darkness, from our lack of hope, from our disappointments and lack of vision, raise us up to be bringers of hope, grounded in faith, loyal to the truth, full of expectation for tomorrow and all our tomorrows. Amen. We say together the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Joan is going to lead us into a time of prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the resources of the world, for the wonders and mysteries of the universe. Help us to use wisely all you have given us for the benefit of others, for the well-being of the earth, and to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for special holy places and for our own church. Through them may we learn awe and respect for your world. We ask you to guide all leaders of worship, to inspire all preachers of the word, to direct your faithful people in the ways of holiness and peace. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for better relationships between nations, 
for a greater sense of belonging to one family. Guide all who influence the minds of others. May their powers be used properly so that the poor are protected, the weak are not exploited, and none is oppressed. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We give thanks for those who have shared with us a sense of wonder and mystery. We pray that we may learn to live simply and to help others simply to live. Lord, protect us, our homes and loved ones. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We bring before you, O oh Lord, all whose lives are broken by ill health and those caring for them at home or in hospital. We give thanks for the dedication of all hospital staff, for scientists developing vaccines and for the many volunteers overseeing the vaccination programme. We remember all those we know personally who are ill at this time and their loved ones in their anxiety. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We give thanks for all who have faithfully obeyed your will, for all who have worshipped you in the beauty of holiness. We give thanks for those who founded this church. We pray for loved ones who have died recently and for those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Grant that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, O Lord, all that lies before us this week of duty and of danger and temptation. Keep us, we beseech you, in all things true to you, that nothing may come between us and your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it brings our service this morning um, for you towards the end. Um, we hope you've enjoyed Nick and I taking the service this morning. Um, we'd like to just give some notices and some thanks. So we'd like to offer our ex extended thanks to Joan, to Jean and to Anne for their wonderful readings and lovely prayers this morning. Thank you so much for doing those for us. Um, just a reminder as well that fellowship groups um, your fellowship group leaders are still contacting you um, regularly. If you do need anything at all, please, please do use your fellowship group leaders um, to talk to. And, you know, if, if there is anything that they are unable to help you with, we will certainly look and see if there are any other ways to, to help and support you. Because we are a living, loving and serving community here at St Paul's. And along the lines of services, we hope... At some point soon we are going to be able to meet back face to face here in St Paul's. Um, not 100% sure yet of dates, we're going to be looking that, at that soon. Um, so please keep an ear out over the next couple of weeks to see when we will be able to join back together here in worship face to face. So at this point, has anybody had a birthday? And I can see you all looking at home, looking at one another, shaking heads, going, no, no, not mine. Somebody must have had a birthday recently or in the last few weeks, maybe last month. So as an extra special treat for you today, we want to say...
happy birthday happy from birthday. us, but also as the treat, take it away Andy. <laughs> Preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.